I want to talk a bit now about the uh, recent announcement of the Federal Day School Settlement. On March 12th of 2019, the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations, Carolyn Bennett, announced an out-of-court settlement in relation to Canada's establishing and funding of Federal Indian Day Schools and its subsequent control and management of those schools. As part of the settlement, Canada will provide compensation to eligible survivor class members. Compensation ranges from $10,000 for harms associated with attendance at an Indian Day School, up to $200,000 for repeated incidents of sexual abuse and or physical assault, causing long-term injury. The baseline harm for claims is such that nearly everyone who attended the Indian Day School will be eligible for at least $10,000 in compensation. Eligible class members will receive a single payment reflecting the most severe harms they suffered, irrespective of the number of schools they attended. The process to claim compensation will be simple, culturally sensitive, non-adversarial and user-friendly. To be an eligible survivor class member, a person must have attended one of the identified Indian Day Schools listed in the settlement agreement that is available on the Indian Day School website which is www.indiandayschools.com. This includes the schools that were located on Six Nations, which are SS number 1 through 12 and the Old Central School. The settlement agreement, however, must be approved by the federal court before the survivor class members can begin making application for compensation. The settlement approval hearing is scheduled to be heard on May 13, 14, and 15, 2019 at the federal court in Winnipeg. Individuals were asked to submit statements of support to the court by May 3rd. This was not the deadline to submit statements, or, or this was not the deadline for making application for reimbursement. Jeremy Bouchard and Jamie Lickers, who are with Gallings Firm, were at the General Council meeting on April 30th and provided an update. They are the law firm associated with this, and they advised that after the court process, applications will not likely be ready for five to six months. This means that one cannot apply for the claim until sometime this fall. In the meantime, Jeremy has agreed to do radio spots on the community and to attend a community radio and to attend a community meeting to provide the information and answer questions. Once the application process begins, Gowlings will also have a team at Six Nations who can help fill out the applications. Gowlings, as I said, is the law firm dealing with the settlement and are doing it at no cost. They have advised that you should be wary of being approached by other law firms who may want to charge you or who may want a commission of your settlement. Gowlings will assist you at no cost and will not take any part of your settlement. We will continue to provide updates to the community as the settlement agreement gets approved and the application process begins. There is information available at the reception desk at Council if you would like to pick it up. I also wanted to uh, talk about gypsy moths and just wanted to give the community a heads up that we will be doing gypsy moth spraying this year to protect our forests. As soon as we get the information as to when the spraying will be done, we will advise the community. So uh, I want to talk about the arena in Eshwigan and the community may have heard that the council was approached by some of the members of the original arena committee, this is from like 20 years ago, who had asked that we remove the name of Gaylor Paulus from the arena in Eshwigan. Information was provided by the committee as well as the family of the late Gaylor Paulus. It was provided to council. Council has now made a decision and their decision is to leave the name of Gaylord Paulus on the arena where it is presently located and to add on top over the front doors the words Six Nations Sports and Cultural Memorial Center. So that will be done in the near future. <laughs>